Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Good morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Sonia Jennifer Ryan, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today I'm here to discuss about social network analysis and semantic web. What is semantic web and why is social network analysis becoming very important? Generally, we all browse or search for something. It's just that when we search or browse for something, what we expect is whatever we are searching for, we expect the relevant solution to be got immediately. For instance, imagine, let me just tell you a scenario where you are going to search for an apple. What apple are you really going to search for? Is it going to be an apple fruit or an apple iPhone? This is where the actual difference lies. So once your images are properly annotated or once your images are properly labeled, they can be retrieved earlier or easily based on whatever you are searching for. So okay, what is semantic web then? Semantic web is something like whatever you are searching for, you extract the information based on the meaning or searching for the information based on the contextual information. Next, we can also say that semantic web is nothing but an extension of our existing world wide web because obviously you are going to search for something. What are you going to search for? Something based on your request. So this diagram again will just help us have a clear look. So here what we are doing is a tree. Again, we are using a convolutional neural network. It's just like a diagrammatical representation where, you know, I was just talking about this annotation where we are clearly annotating or labeling what are my leaves, what are my trunks and what is going to be my root or a branch. So only when I'm going to label all this properly, it helps me get a refined solution or it makes my searching process a bit easy. Semantic web is nothing but again as told it's not extension of the world wide web. So when do I get some solution properly? Only when all the minor details in the sense the metadata are being properly given. Okay, the computers are main, able to make meaningful interpretation, retrieve images or results based on the user's request. The same example as in Apple iPhone and an Apple fruit. Imagine a case where I had labeled my phone properly and a fruit properly. Maybe a fruit should have this, you know, the stalk or the leaf with it. So, or the seeds within. I can conclude it. So, my images are being labeled properly. So, I get the search result for what I am searching for. Okay. So, what a semantic web actually encompasses? It is nothing but an umbrella. It, you know, you can say all this encloses it or the vision behind semantic web. The automation of information retrieval. Obviously, you are retrieving something, we want a better solution. And then your personal assistance and also your IoT or your Internet of Things. So as I was just telling, when we want to get a better retrieval, the images have to be properly annotated or labeled. So for all this, before we going into in detail, there are some basic terminologies which we should know better. First one is going to be the resource description framework. When we say the resource description framework, it's going to be a set of triplets. Triplets in the sense, we have a subject, predicate and the object. The subject, how is it going to affect the predicate in turn the object? So here, Alice is a friend of Bob. So Alice is going to be my subject and who is going to be the object? Bob is going to be the object and predicate is going to be is a friend of. So this is how a resource description framework works. The relationship between the subject and the predicates. So once this is defined, images can be automated in a better manner. And what does this OWL mean? So first, the images are being described. That is, they are being annotated or labeled. Now here, it's like an ontology language. It is machine readable language. So what basically we do here is, here, for instance, we are trying to describe the relationship. So just let's have a look here. A journal article or a book is a kind of publication. So you can say a generalization relationship is present here. This publication 
can be published by either a publisher or an author. So once all this is being labeled, again, it makes my retrieval process in a better manner. Okay, so what is an ontology? Ontology is nothing but a formal relationship of a set of concepts in that particular domain. So here I can tell my domain as a either an occupation or something to do with my publication because we are basically talking only about the publisher, books and the occupation present. Okay, what does the SPAR will means? SPAR protocol and an RDF query language. We basically use this. So initially what have we done? We have described a format in RDF, resource description framework. Once that is done, we are doing our markup. The ontologies are being created using our OWL. So once these two are ready, the next stage is where we are able to retrieve the information. Whatever I am searching for, the result which I am searching for has to be obtained from the user. So any query you give it to the system, the Spark you will like any other querying language will help you get the relevant result. So what are these URIs? URIs, URLs, URNs, they actually act like an identifier. You know, for example, we are going to Google and typing uh, Google uh, www.google.com or we typing an IP address. It is going to be the name or the address by which I want to locate the resource for which I am looking forward for. So in case of my URLs, directly I specify whatever I am looking. As given here, I am searching for example.com. However, in case of URNs, that is uniform resource names, my I have to give like for example using my namespaces. Now what are these linked datas? So linked datas are nothing but when the datas are linked across various databases, it will be easy for me to retrieve it. So then what does linked open data mean? Linked open data means it is okay, a structured data which is being published in a way. Okay, linked as I told, it is being present across. It is available throughout. Okay, so it says that interlinking across servers. So you know this is a common example, okay where there is a story of a lady who loses her brother. This Lambrinath means a lady who loses her brother and then she has to go search for her brother in the case of a maze and she ends up retrieving him and it is going to be like a tunnel. Similarly, so this is like the maze where this lady is going to search for a brother and she is going to help or identify where the brother is. Similarly, here what happens is, how is this being compared to semantic web? What it, you know, there's a tunnel of information present. It goes and searches for the required data. How is this possible? First, your data should be linked and it should be open or available to all. Next, the four rules of generally linking the data. First one, use HTTPs. Next one, we are using our URIs. And next, obviously, it should be using our described using RDF, retrieved using our SparkQL and then include these links to our URIs. Next, what are the basic problems with our existing web? As we discussed earlier, unstructured data, datas are not being labeled and then isolated silos. You know, I do some work, the other person do some work and the third person also may be doing the same work. The reason is because he is not aware that he is going to do it. So because of which these datas have to be linked. So we just spoke about the linked open data. And then again, ambiguity and lack of context. So once when we label the data or we draw the ontology, our data will become unambiguous. There won't be any ambiguity. Obviously, once when it falls within the domain, it will have its the correct uh, context in which we are trying to fix it in. Limited interoperability. And then we are having our static content. The static content is again going to be one of the main drawback of our existing, uh, I mean the world wide web. You know nowadays how many of you all know like in Wikipedia, we can actually give our own content, publish our content. The web these days are not static, it's becoming dynamic. You want to update something, most welcome. So this is where the actual change comes. Okay, so this is where again the social web started coming. So what does social web here basically means? The user generate content. When it's going to be a dynamic one, you publish your own data. So
social networking within the families. We all have these WhatsApp groups, communities. Collaboration tools, yes. You know, earlier it was like me working on one word document separately, my friend working on a document separately. So maybe for 53 students to fill in a detail, the document has to go across 53 people. But now once at one thing, at one time, using your Google Docs or your this one, you can easily, that uh, what happens simultaneously, multiple people can open it because it is being available online, easily accessible. 53 people, instead of it going through 53 people, at the same instant, 53 people can access it. And then it's going to be very interactive. Our voice calls or video calls, video chats. So, like before I would conclude, I would just like to summarize. In case of the existing web, the problems were like ability to uh, retrieve information, relevant information. And again, combining and reusing the information. This becomes the advantage of semantic web where ability to retrieve relevant information is becoming more because of the again ontologies and using the RDF. Next one, reusing information is becoming easier for me. How? Again, automatic linking of the data, improving our uh, recall and precision and next automation and data integration. This is what happens in case of open and linked data. And then the increasing the automation in case of the service life cycle. Thank you.